What a blessing. Good morning. I, too, have an announcement that I'm extremely excited about. I know that uh, many of you in this room I care deeply about, but I do have my favorites. <laughs> Just need to, need to know that. Um, and I do take bribes. Just know <laughs> this take place. But I'd like to ask my wife to come up to the front, please. Yeah, it's happening. It's happening. Uh, yeah. Just know I will pay for this later. Hi, baby. How are you? How, what? You're going to kill me? Okay. okay. That's fine. That's fine. It is her birthday today. She is, uh, am I allowed to say it? I better not. She's 29. No, 39. 39. Yeah, you just turned 39. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I'd like to sing happy birthday to her, and just know this, this, this girl supports me in ways and loves me when nobody else uh, can see. She puts up with me. Uh, you know, it's amazing when some people go to her and say, man, your husband is just so godly, and, and she, she lets the, yeah, 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 I know, I know. Uh, and she lets them know, no, he's really a, a jerk, and, and that she has to put up, but man, I, I thank you, and we all thank you for supporting all of us, and yeah, absolutely. Well, let's sing happy birthday together, and remember, what is her name? Tabitha. It is Tabitha. Uh, should I? Should I? All right, uh, her name's Pooh. Pooh, yeah. That's what she's been called ever since she's a little girl, and so if, if we're family here, this is Pooh, amen? All right, let's sing together. I love her. She, I'm going to keep her. I'm going to keep her. Please stand with me. Let's read some scripture together. And this does include you, Overflow. We want to hear you in here. Amen, church? Amen. This comes from Luke chapter 6, verses 37 and 38. Read with me, please. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. You may have a seat. Love well. We say it all the time, don't we? Love well. That's kind of our calling card. You see it on our shirts, and you'll see it on the plastic cups in the foyer that love well. And, and it's a call to action that we have. It's not a suggestion. It's not one of those things that we say love well if you feel like it. Love well as long as it benefits you. Love well, period. Is anybody tired of hearing this? You guys are lying. I don't get tired of hearing it when everything's going good. But it's whenever I'm in front of somebody who's offended me and the Lord's reminding me to love well and not lash out, that I'm really tired of hearing it. Somebody cuts you off and the Lord says, love well. Love you. I hope you don't have a flat tire and run into the wall. <laughs> because sometimes it's hard, isn't it? It's hard to love well. It's hard to love people that really don't like to receive love. And we just must admit that there are some people in this world that 
are just hard to love. Well, you've been one of those people too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no. Now I pretty much get along with everybody as long as it goes my way. <laughs> as long as it goes my way, there's no problem. We're good. Ladies and gentlemen, if this was easy, then anybody would do it. It's easy to say, but it's extremely hard to do. Understand this. Another scripture in 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let me have an amen. Isn't that awesome that we are unlovable, we are full of junk, we're full of our own stuff, yet we can go to God and say, you know what, I messed it up, will you forgive me? His grace and his peace comes upon us and he wipes us free from all condemnation by forgiving us our sins. Well, let's go ahead and follow that example. Because the first thing you need to learn about loving well is it starts with forgiveness and here's the thing ladies and gentlemen I may step on some toes today but I will not apologize for the truth it's okay to speak truth in here isn't it church it's okay to speak truth in the overflow isn't it overflow <laughs> amen <laughs> we heard it we heard it in spirit heard it in spirit I want to read a scripture, we've read it before, but it is an amazing parable that Jesus used to teach us the importance of forgiving others. It's in Matthew chapter 18, and it's verses 21 through 35. Matthew 18, verses 21 through 35. It says, Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven? You see, to Peter, that was a good number. I'll give them more than a second chance, third, fourth, fifth, even sixth. I'll give them seven because that's a cool spiritual number, and it makes me sound good. But after seven, it's over. And here's the response. Jesus answered, verse 22, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. Sounds just like a bank, doesn't it? At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him and canceled the debt and let him go. I think the banks of the world should follow this example. Let us go before the bank president. I am so sorry. Please forgive me. If you give me time, I'll repay it. Now, what are you supposed to say, Mr. Bank President? <laughs> uh, your interest rate just went up. What do you think? Yeah. But this king let him go, verse 28. But when the servant went out, he left from his forgiven debt. He found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, Be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused instead. He went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that you owed me. Because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. 
stings a little bit, doesn't it? Poor Peter. I mean, honestly. The guy's trying to do it, Greg. Jesus, how many times should I forgive my brother? Seven? Uh, No. Seventy-seven. As long as it takes. And if you don't, this is how God's going to treat you. He does not debate with forgiveness. It even says that if you do not forgive those who sinned against you, your Father in heaven will not forgive you of your sins. But does he not know what they have done to me? And Jesus sits there and says, yeah, I kind of got these holes in my hands and feet, and you're holding the hammer. I kind of know what it means. But Jesus, we're not talking about me. We're talking about the people that have offended me. How about this one? I just don't think I can forgive them. I don't feel it. How many of you have had the problem with forgiving somebody when you don't feel it? It's tough, guys, this is tough. But isn't it funny that God did not sit there and go, forgive others as soon as you feel like it. He said, you forgive others, really not worried about your feelings. And we say, but Pastor, how, how do we do this? Notice this. This is how my Heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Imagine that. Here we are with a huge debt that we could not repay. Jesus Christ goes to the cross and forgives us our sins. There's nothing that we can do to make it right. All of us are pretty much masters that when we screw up, we go into action to try to fix what we did wrong and make it better. But the majority of us don't make it better. All we do is dig ourselves into a deeper hole. Has anybody experienced that? Yeah, because if I went ahead and stole from somebody, I'm going to lie to somebody else to make it better, which is going to make me make another decision that's going to try to cover my tracks so that I can try to appear that I'm not a bad person where the truth is I'm just messed up. And guys, we've all done it. We've all messed up. And he comes to us and he says, I forgive you. But Jesus, I, I really messed it up. You, you don't know, Pastor, what I've done in my life. He does, and he says, I died on the cross for your sin. And just as I forgive you, forgive the others around you that have hurt you. Isn't it amazing that we love to talk about grace and forgiveness for us? But man, when somebody needs grace and forgiveness from us, we're like, well, I don't know if I can. (laughs) You've hurt me too deep. (laughs) And I will never be the same. I like this one too. I forgive you in Jesus. But. (gasps) Now, here's the serious part. I know many of you in this room, you got some serious scars. You got scars that have weighed you down that I will not pretend to say I know about. But I do know this. If anybody understands your scars, it is the one who is scarred. You understand? And he has all authority. And he has forgiven you, and even though you may not feel like it, even though it may not be within your power to forgive others, he will provide the power to help you forgive others. You must understand, this is not to get somebody off the hook. This is to help you be free. And I know right now, once again, you you might be thinking, but Pastor, you don't understand, every time I'm around this person, these scars reopen. And I just want to write them off. I just want to let them go. I understand that. And you must, you must understand that you may have a relationship with somebody that has hurt you deeply. And it would almost be easier for you not to ever have to talk to that person again. As a matter of fact, if they live on one side of the country in California, you just want to live in New York. And stay far away from each other. We don't have to talk. I don't hate you, but just stay away from me. And isn't it amazing how many times we feel like we're over something until we become face-to-face with the person that hurt us? And it seems like it opens right back up, doesn't it? 
and we think, man, I thought I got over that. Listen, he understands your scars. But I want to tell a story about a man and a scorpion. And in this, this is going to help us understand what parameters and relationships look like. Once upon a time, many great stories start this way. Once upon a time, there was a man whose life was falling apart. And so he went to a creek just to gather his thoughts, and he sat down on a rock. And as he's trying to gather his thoughts because his life is falling apart, a scorpion crawls up beside him on another rock. And the man looks down and says, oh, a scorpion. That's just what we would do. (laughs) Okay, if it was me, I would have shrieked like a girl. And ran away and said, there's a scorpion. And the scorpion looks at the man and says, please, don't be alarmed. I'm not your normal scorpion. To where the man replied, I know because you're talking. (laughs) See, he's a different scorpion. Pretty soon, him and his scorpion start sharing. Scorpion asks the man, what's going on in your life? The man begins to share everything with him. And the scorpion's going, man, I understand. And, and pretty soon they're sharing each other's burdens. And, and they both cry together. They both laugh together. And they wipe each other's te- Well, they wipe their own tears. And, and pretty soon the man looks at the scorpion and says, you know, I, I don't mean to be forward, but right now you're the best friend I got. And the scorpion says, you're my best friend. They said, let's just hang out together and continue to encourage one another. And the man said, I'm hungry. Will you go with me to the closest town and and so I can get me something to eat? And the scorpion said, sure. And so the man puts the scorpion on his hand and they begin to walk. And as they walk, the scorpion goes and stings the man. And the man goes, oh. But he doesn't cry because he's a man. And he looks at the scorpion and says, why'd you do that? And the scorpion said, I'm so sorry. It was just an accident. And the man said, you know, it's okay. <laughs> I know your heart. We just shared with each other. Let's just keep walking. They're walking. Everything's good. And all of a sudden, psh, stings him again. And the man does this and drops the scorpion. And the scorpion's like, I am so sorry that I have stung you again. To where the man is going, my tongue is becoming numb <laughs> because of you. right true story by the way (laughs) from this point the scorpion promises the man i will never sting you again i'm so sorry it's just a habit pretty soon the man trusts him one more time picks him up and starts working and you can see the scorpion is going "Mm -hmm." he's just fighting it he's fighting it but pretty soon he just starts stinging and the guy throws him on the ground It says, what are you doing? And the scorpion goes, I can't help it. I'm a scorpion. (laughs) Okay? And the man says, why would you hurt me like this? I know inside of you, you care about me, but you continue to sting me. And the scorpion says, you must have grace and forgiveness for me. Pick me up. To where the man replied, I have grace and forgiveness for you. And I've proven that because I haven't taken my heel to you. (laughs) The scorpion says, can we still be friends? And the, the man said, yes, I still love you. But I know that you can't help but sting me. Therefore, you walk and I'll walk behind you. You see what I'm saying? Ladies and gentlemen, sometimes some of you have scorpions in your life. Some of you continue to look for the acceptance of a critical friend or a critical parent. And no matter what you do, you go and you try to make them proud, right? And instead of being proud, they just cut you down, right? It's the sting. And you sit there and go, I will never subject myself to them again. I write them off. I don't want anything to do with them. And what happens is you birth a thing called bitterness and resentment. 
And those things get extremely heavy. And man, you wear it around and you will polish it. This is what they've done to me and I will never forget. 9-11, never forget. <laughs> I'll never forget. I'll make a t-shirt, never forget. <laughs> and the Lord is telling you, let it go. Why? Did you see what they did to me? It was totally unfair. I didn't deserve it, and they did it to me. And I'm going to hold it against them because they don't deserve my forgiveness. And the Lord is going to be extremely careful with what you say. For the measure that you judge another, it will be judged to you. You give me one reason why I should forgive them. And Jesus says, you give me one reason why I should forgive you. And once again, we say, Jesus, we're not talking about me. <laughs> this relationship you and I have, that's ours. But I'm talking about this relationship that I have over here. And Jesus says, listen, if you and I are to have a relationship, that means I exist in you, and you will extend me to them. However, notice this statement. The love for another should never change, even if the parameter of the relationship has to. Let that sink in. The love for somebody should never change, even though the parameter of your relationship should. Okay? If you have somebody that continues to steal money from you, don't let them in your room. Why do you keep stealing from me? Because your money's on the dresser. <laughs> well, guess what? You're welcome into my house. Can I go to your room? No. Well, I think you should forgive me. Forgiveness is granted. I'm glad to have you here. Sit here in front of me so I can make sure you don't take my TV. <laughs> You're still loving the person, but you set parameters. It is the enemy's desire and goal to divide us because of our differences. Because if you have a friend that is a kleptomaniac who can't help but steal things, you still don't have a reason to write them off. Because guess what? You may not have a problem stealing things, but I promise you, you have your problems. And when we continue to get into our issues, we pray that somebody will have grace and forgiveness for us. Amen? So notice this. You may never be able to go into my room again. But if you need me, you call me. I got you. Based on parameters. The love is still there. Ladies and gentlemen, many of you have put your parents through this test. Can I get an amen? Amen. And you wonder why when you called them again and said, please, can I stay at your house? And they went, oh, I love you. No. <laughs> but I'm good. Now I promise. And they say, no. And you say, how can you do this to your own child? You're going to kick me to the streets? Uh, you left to the streets. We love you always. I'll never forget a, a young lady that I had to counsel for seven years who has just flourished into this beautiful woman of Christ. There came a time when she had to learn to stand on her own two feet. That she had to exist for herself and see who she was in Christ and quit trying to run game. <laughs> and many of you are like, you're stepping all over my toes, Pastor. <laughs> From this point, she found the blessing of parameters. Does the Lord put parameters on you? Okay, let, let's go over this because right now you're going, no, -uh, his love has no parameters. Agreed, but he's got some things for you and I, doesn't he? Father, if you truly love me, I shall be able to go in this bar and not partake. And Jesus is going, you better not go in that bar. I gave you a brain, you better use it. <laughs> Jesus, if you truly love me, I can listen to any music that I want to. You better not listen to that music. But they get to listen to it. We're not talking about them, Travis. 
We're talking about you because I know what makes you different. So here's what happens. Right now, if you will think about the scars that you have and those who rendered the scars, right now the Lord is telling you to forgive them and do not be offended by this. Do not be offended by this and do not think that the Lord is taking sides, right? Don't we have that problem sometimes? Lord, how could you love them? How quickly they become them. They used to be close to us, but now they're them. Lord, how could you love them? Because I loved you first. Lord, but they don't even praise your name. Exactly, and that is why I love them. And guess what? I may use you to love them to bring them to me. So let me ask you, ask you this question. Journey with me for a minute. Let's go ahead and fast forward to whenever Christ comes back. And there you are standing before the Father. And he looks at you and says, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into thy kingdom. And right behind you is the person that had hurt you the most. And they're standing before the Father. And they hit their knees and cry out for forgiveness. How are you going to feel? Will you say, uh, Jesus, don't let him in. <laughs> I promise you on that day, you'll be crying out to the Lord saying, grace and forgiveness for them too. Grace and forgiveness for them too because in him, your scars are mended. Do you understand that forgiveness creates an ointment that goes over your pains and scars to where you're freed from it, to where you can breathe, to where you no longer carry this resentment and bitterness around, to where you sit there and see them, and now that you have this understanding of who Christ is and how much he loves you, that you can extend love to them, and they may throw their jabs in there, but they don't affect you anymore because you're all about love instead of what you need out of them. It's freeing, ladies and gentlemen. It is exactly freeing to be able to sit there and say, you can't hurt me anymore because I'm healed by love. <laughs> Man, I'm so in love with Christ right now, and I know that he loves me and he is for me, that all of the things you say to try to tear me down won't. In fact, I just ask that you seek him because I love you. Let me tell you something. You can be free. I want to read one more scripture, Luke 6, 27 through 36. Luke 6, 27 through 36. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Dang it. Bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. I'm going to stop right there. Let's go ahead and clarify what that prayer should sound like. For those who mistreat you, when he says pray for them, it's not praying against them. Okay, let's go ahead and establish that right now. Okay, Lord, I want to pray for my enemies that you would send a boulder to crush their house. Amen. <laughs> Praise your name. If someone slaps you on the cheek... Turn to them the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you. And if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Here's the most important part of the scripture. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies, do good to them. And lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High. Because he is kind and, uh, and merciful to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful just as your father is merciful. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this goes against the way America thinks. This goes against the way America thinks. And, man, we love that golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Well, I wouldn't have done that to other people. Don't get on your high horse here. Why would Jesus require us to do good to our enemies when they don't want to do good to us? It's because if you're following Jesus, if you're in the love of Jesus, then you are taken care of. I just got convicted on my own stuff just now. I cannot stand it when he does that stuff. You know, I'm sitting here trying to preach. God, do you mind? This is for them. Not, oh, it is for, okay. I have. I, I cannot believe that just happened. It happens quite a bit. I'll say it again. If you're in the love of Jesus, then you're cared for. Nobody can take advantage of you. Your needs are met. If somebody steals from you and you're in the love of Jesus, do you not think he'll replace that? Do you not think that Jesus will take care of you where you are? And what are the things that make us fight more than anything? Goofy reasons. Oh, man. Do you not think the enemy laughs his face off when he gets a goofy reason in between you and somebody else and it turns into something huge? Me and my wife, when we were first married, man, the enemy was laughing because he would use the silliest stuff to keep us from talking to each other for weeks. Me putting my underwear on the floor. What's the big deal about that? Me demanding my supper by 7 o'clock. What? Ain't nothing wrong with that. Okay, let's go ahead and erase those two things I just said. I want to apologize to you, honey. I did not mean any of that. There was a time when me and my wife were fighting over who had the last diet, Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Baby, you had the last diet, Dr. Pepper. Really? I think I would have remembered if I had the last diet, Dr. Pepper. And I don't understand why you're lying to me about drinking the last diet, Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Baby, once again, I didn't have the last Dr. Pepper. You did it yourself, and I think it's selfish because you didn't leave one for me. You could have at least split it with me. <laughs> well, I don't know about this Dr. Pepper stuff, but maybe you and I just shouldn't be together. Well, maybe we shouldn't be together again. Because if a couple can't drink Diet Dr. Pepper together, then they can't be together. <laughs> then fine, I'm sleeping in the master bedroom. I'm going to sleep in the other room. Fine, I don't care. Who cares? They say, you know, a week later, we're like, what's up? <laughs> Nothing. What's up with you? <laughs> you know what Jesus is saying during the midst of this whole fight? I've blessed you with a dollar. Go get another guy, Dr. Pepper. <laughs> and as much as we laugh about this, I'm sick and tired of watching the enemy tear up the family of God over goofy stuff. If you want us to become strong, then let forgiveness flow from you. Walk into the places that you can be offended saying, no matter what they do to me today, I'm not going to be offended. And it doesn't matter if you like me or not. I love you no matter what. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you this right now. If you want to understand and experience the depth of loving well, begin to forgive those who you have a hard time forgiving. Your life will sprout with living water. You will be free. You will see that the trees are greener, that the grass is softer, because you will walk in the presence of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I'm here to tell you, right now you have an opportunity, and some of you are bleeding because I've brought up some scars. He understands. He calls for you to be freed from bitterness and resentment. They're heavy, so let forgiveness take away the burden. 
bitterness, resentment, they're heavy. How many of you would like to be free from that? I know I would. And it's funny, I can sit there and think back to some goofy things that I still have issues with. Like I said, I just got convicted this morning, and I find that extremely unfair. <laughs> but man, I'm here to work this thing out, aren't I? We are all here together to work this thing out, even the overflow. <laughs> Let us embrace the forgiveness of him and quickly extend it to others. Not so they can be freed, but so that they can see him in us. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, love well. Even if it's difficult. <laughs> and let me, let me go ahead and throw my uh, sermon disclaimer. Okay. Because we have talked about forgiveness. Maybe as early as this afternoon or tomorrow. You will have an opportunity to extend forgiveness to somebody that you may not want to. Do this. Because he has forgiven us. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together. Grab the hand of the person that is next to you, please. If I was a real pastor at this point, I would, I would try to draw you up and pray with you. I need you to be responsible for what the Lord is telling you. You are responsible for your walk with God. Amen. But I will tell you this, if there are issues in your life and you're having problems and you need prayer, you find me now. You find Pastor Allen, you can find Red Sergio, Jim, Cindy, Michelle, you can find Brian, Amanda, anybody you need to to say, listen, I'm having problems with this, will you pray with me, amen? We will go to work together, amen? amen. Father, we thank you so much for our time this morning, and Lord, I want to thank you right now for convicting me. But Father, I desire to be obedient to you. Father, for you to be the source and to be everything. So, Lord, that I am not in need. For if you were for us, what can be against us? So, Father, as you have extended grace, mercy, and forgiveness to us, may we gladly extend grace, mercy, and love to others. Help us to forgive those that have hurt us. Father, show us your love so that is how we know how to truly love well. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone said, amen. amen. Thank you and go love well.